Yes. Now we will discuss about the suboccipital triangle. First of all, make a diagram. This is posterior view of the skull. Here you can see this is this bone is occipital bone. This is lambdoid suture. This is occipital bone. Here is external occipital crest. This is superior nuchal line. This is inferior nuchal line. This is superior nuchal line. Inferior nuchal line. This is superior and this is inferior nuchal line. <coughs> this is margin of the posterior margin of the forearm and magnum. This is posterior margin of the forearm and magnum. Here. This is mastoid process. Here is position of This is transverse process of the first vertebra, first cervical vertebra, that is atlas. This is posterior arch of the atlas, and here lies. This is posterior arch. This is anterior arch. Here is foramen transverse serum. This is foramen transverse serum. This is superior articular surface. This is vertebral canal. In this diagram, this is posterior arch. From here to here, this is posterior arch. This is posterior tubercle. So there is posterior arch. Posterior arch of atlas. This is posterior arch of the atlas. And this is posterior tubercular. So this is posterior arch, this is posterior tubercular. This is foramen transverse serum. This is foramen transverse serum. This is posterior arch of the atlas. This is posterior tubercular of the atlas. Here is another thing that is the bifidus spinous process. Here is 
this is the spine of axis second vertebra this is spine feathers the spine of the axis axis from posterior margin to here and what important thing that is here is first nerve c1 this is ventral ramus of the c1 this is dorsal ramus of the c1 this is ventral ramus here is ventral ramus this is dorsal ramus of the c1 first cervical nerve and another important thing through foramen transversorum here one artery passes that artery is vertebral artery so this artery passes here this is third part of vertebral artery so here lies this is third part of the vertebral artery from here to here this is third part of the vertebral artery this lower part is second part this third part lies here this is third part this is third part of the vertebral artery and another important thing this is posterior arch of the atlas and this is posterior margin of the foramen magnum from here to here a membrane is present that membrane is known as this membrane is known as posterior atlanto occipital membrane this membrane is known as posterior atlanto occipital membrane this membrane and under structure this is posterior tubercle of the atlas from this posterior tubercle of the atlas the muscle takes origin and is inserted here below the inferior nuchal line so this muscle is this is rectus capitis posterior minor muscle this muscle is rectus capitis posterior minor muscle this muscle is this is rectus capitis posterior minor muscle and the muscle which arises from the spine of the axis and inserted lateral to this this muscle is longer than this that's why it is known as rectus capitis posterior major muscle so this is rectus capitis posterior major muscle and the muscle from transverse passage of the atlas runs upward and inserted between these two nuchal lines here this muscle is superior oblique muscle this muscle is superior oblique muscle and the muscle which takes origin from this 
spine of the axis and inserted under the transverse process of the atlas. This muscle is inferior oblique muscle. This is inferior oblique muscle. Now you can see this is a triangle. This is suboccipital triangle. So boundary of the suboccipital triangle inferiorly by inferior oblique muscle, superior laterally by superior oblique muscle, superior medially by rectus captus posterior major, this is supplemented by rectus captus posterior minor. So these two muscles form the superior medial boundary. Floor of this is formed by, as you have seen, floor is formed by this structure, that is posterior atlanto-occipital membrane. And content of the content of this. You can see here, this is posterior ramus, this is posterior ramus of the C1, sorry, this is uh, uh, spinal of C1, it has anterior ramus, this is posterior ramus of the C1, and this posterior ramus of the C1 gives supply to inferior oblique, gives supply to superior oblique, gives supply to rectus captus, posterior minor and major, both. And also, it gives supply to the muscle which lies over this, which form the roof. So, this is content of this is this triangle is two important things. One is this is third part of the vertebral artery, and another is this is C1 spinal nerve. Its dorsal division which gives supply to the branches of these muscles. Now roof is formed by all these structures are covered by roof and a roof is formed by here one muscle is attached. This is semi-spinalis Captis. If you draw this diagram here, this muscle lies over this. This is semi spinalis captis. This lies here. This muscle covers this. This is semi spinalis captis. And another muscle that is Langismus captis. So this is Langismus captis and semi spinalis captus these two muscles form the roof of this type so roof is formed by two muscles semi spinalis captus and spinalis captus this is semi spinalis captus and this is this muscle is longissimus captus sorry this is longissimus captus. Longissimus captus. So these two muscles form the roof. One important thing that is first nerve, the second nerve. This is here is second nerve which passes below this inferior oblique muscle and turns like this. It pierces this muscle semi spinalis captus and reaches into the here and also it pierces the trapezius muscle here and the layer is present that is trapezius it also pierces the trapezius muscle this is dorsal ramus this is thickest cutaneous branch present in the body this is greater occipital nerve this is greater occipital nerve. 
greater occipital plane. So this is uh, structure of the this suboccipital triangle boundary content roof and floor. This region is clinically important because in case of failure of the lumbar puncture, cistern puncture is done here. So this is important for the cistern 